My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's Everyday Office video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a unique permission level in Microsoft SharePoint. Any SharePoint site that you happen to be sitting on can have its own unique permission settings. To work with the permission settings on any given SharePoint site, you navigate to that site, then click the gear in the top right hand corner and click on site settings. And if you have the necessary permissions to do so, you'll see that you have links to see the people and groups that have permissions uh, on your site, as well as the overall site permissions that have been created on the site that you're working on. So on the left hand side, I'm going to click on site permissions and you'll see in here that there are a number of different things that I can do with permissions. I can grant permissions to a, an individual. I can create a new group of people who have permissions. I can click one of the options in here and edit the permissions that that group has been given. And over here on the right hand side, you can see the permission levels button. Now the basic idea here is that anytime you have an individual or a group that you want to give permission to the site, you need to be able to define what that even means. What permissions are we talking about? Should they be able to edit files? Should they be able to delete files? Should they be able to uh, make changes to the permissions of the SharePoint site? Things like that. Those definitions, what are people capable of doing, are held in the permission level itself. And there are a number of different permission levels Microsoft gives you, and you can also create your own custom permission levels. However, when I click on permission levels here on a given site that I'm working on, you'll notice that the permission levels I see do not have checkboxes next to them. And that's because these are not editable. I cannot go into these permission levels and make changes, nor can I create new unique permission levels. Notice on the left hand side, I see manage the permission levels on the parent website. So what this is telling you is that you must have the administrator access to the top of the SharePoint tree, as it were, the parent site to all the other sites that you have. If you have that level of permissions, you can click on this link, navigate up the structure, and create new unique permission levels. If you do not have that level of permissions, you're going to have to ask somebody who does. Okay, so I happen to have the necessary permissions to do this. I click on Manage the Permission Levels on the Parent website, and notice here that my address has gotten substantially shorter. Now it's just knack.sharepoint.com slash layouts is just the folder that we're in. We're not on any of the subsites. We're not down further in the structure working on the San Pedro or on the Albany sites. And yes, San Pedro is how they say it in Southern California. I know it's ridiculous. Um, but you can see here that now I have edit rights to the different permission levels that are in here. And in fact, in the past, I have created permission levels like power user and people I don't trust and enhanced contribute. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those so you can see just the ones that Microsoft gives us by default. You see full control, which is, of course, uh, administrator access to a given site. And view only down here at the bottom is only the capacity to see what's there. Notice if you go up as high as read, then people can actually download documents. So if you do not want them to be able to download documents, you actually want to give them view only access. And then we have contribute access, which allows them to add, update, and delete list items. And we have edit access, which is add, edit, and delete the lists as well as the lists items. So these people, editors, can manage what the list looks like, what it does. And designers can not only add, update, and delete, but they can also approve content and they can customize the SharePoint site. So these are the different levels that you could give access to uh, different folks. And if you want to see more detail as to what, for instance, a designer can do, you just click on the little link right there for design and you see the list of checkboxes that have been marked for that particular level of permissions. But let's say that I go through all these permission levels and I realize that none of them is exactly what I need. Uh, let's say, for example, there is a type of user that I have in mind 
who should be able to upload new documents and should be able to edit documents, but they have proven that they are not allowed to delete things. They have randomly deleted things in the past and they need to have those keys taken away from them. I can click on add permission level as long as I'm on the top of the SharePoint uh, structure and create a new permission level called basically anything I want. So uh, I'll call this one no delete, right? Very simple description. Um, users who should be able to collaborate but not delete files. And now what I need to do is I need to go through here and decide what they are capable of. Notice there's a little checkbox here for adding items. Now, if you think about it, if somebody's going to be able to add an item, they need to be able to see what they're adding it to. They need to be able to open the site up, things like that. And in fact, when I click the checkbox for add items, you'll see the checkbox for view items automatically gets selected as well as view pages, as well as open the SharePoint site altogether. So I want them to be able to add items, and I also want them to be able to edit items. And so I click those two check boxes. I don't want them to be able to look at lists, or manage lists. Maybe I want them to be able to uh, view the versions, but not delete the versions. Again, they have proven that they're not capable of uh, deleting things uh, intelligently. Maybe I want them to be able to create their own alerts. That seems perfectly reasonable. So you click the check boxes for the things that they should be able to do, leaving off the things that you feel scared of, and then down here at the bottom you click on create. Now at this point you have a permission level, but you haven't yet assigned it to anyone. So now you navigate back to the SharePoint site that you had in mind. So I'm going to go to my gear here, go to my site contents, and sort of navigate down the structure. Go into the team site, Go down the structure to the, again, like I said, they call it San Pedro in California. I don't know why. All right, so here it is, the San Pedro SharePoint site. When I'm working on the permissions here, again, I click the gear in the top right-hand corner, go to site settings, and click on site permissions. At that point, I can see... the different groups of people who have the rights of some sort to the various parts of my SharePoint site. And what I'm going to do is create a brand new group of people. So I click on the Create Group button up at the top of the screen. I call this one uh, No Delete Members. Members who do not have delete privileges. The owner of this group, I'm going to go ahead and make the San Pedro owners. There it is. And that way, anybody who is an owner of the SharePoint site can also be the owner of the No Delete Members group. All right, and right down here, as you can see, No Delete. Users who should be able to collaborate, but not delete files. I click Create, and now I have this group of people who are capable of collaborating but not deleting, and all I have to do is add somebody to it. So I can click on New over here on the right, choose Add Users, and put somebody new in here. and share. So now Dolores is a member of the group and she has all the rights and privileges that have been set up for that group of people.